Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Caterina and I'm coming from Politecnico di Milano. I'm a PhD student. Uh, I'm finishing my first year of the PhD. And uh, today I will talk about fast insight, about the severity of hurricane impact with spatial analysis of Twitter posts. And uh, this presentation will be more like from the part of a user, not that much from like developer. Uh, since I'm very new in this uh, area. Uh, my background is environmental engineer and I'm more focused on the risk mitigation and so on. So here we can uh, we see the small overview uh, of today's presentation. At the very beginning I will talk about social media and what for what we use it. Uh, after what uh, I will talk about the event, the hurricane that uh, we have observed for uh, this work and the sample that we have collected, um, actually the, the tweets uh, related uh, to the hurricane and uh, finally the spatial statistics that have been performed in a QGIS using plugins, uh, kernel density and hotspot analysis and finally conclusions will be made. So, social media in everyday life. I bet that most of all, most of all of you are using some of the social media platforms for um, checking what is going on or you're also active user and you're posting every day or I don't know once a week. I did small homework and yesterday I checked um, the, the posts about this conference and I find out that we are one very big community and that a lot of people are posting a lot of interesting things that are going on. And some of them, I just point them out. Uh, some users were posting about workshops, the others about keynote speakers and keynote speech, and the others about uh, the connecting events. But what happened when the emergency occur? Do people use social media and do they share the situation in which they are found. Yes, they do. And it depends on the, like how big the event it is. It also, uh, it depends uh, the response. And uh, according to the literature, like the most used social media platform for uh, sharing the information about the uh, disaster is uh, Twitter. And here we can see that one user have posted a picture straight after the hurricane passed. Here, uh, the city of uh, Dalajes, I don't know if, it, if I pronounce it well, uh, the municipality have um, published uh, that they are doing the recovery of the electricity poles. And uh, some users are posting the drone videos of the affected areas the others about uh, still the recovery of the roads and so on. So people are very active. Let's go back to the start. Uh, before we started uh, this work, we were thinking, okay, uh, when the event occur, what people will do in case of small scale event? By small scale, scale I mean maybe like tropical storm that, for example, in some um, areas of the world, it's more or less normal, not, not every day, but it happens very frequently. And some people uh, that are very active on the social medias, they will uh, post uh, the, the information about it and it will, they will share it with their followers. So here we can see Tom, we can see Tom, let's call him Tom, and he's very active on the social media and uh, he will share that uh, the branches fall down on the, on the street and that some uh, traffic signs uh, have been damaged and so on. But what will happen in case of the large scale event, we, have, we can see that a lot of uh, buildings have been damaged, there are cars all over um, the, the roads uh, that have been damaged, well, the response will increase. Because 
maybe like small tropical storm for me is not a big deal. But for Tom it is, so he wants to share it with his followers. But like uh, this like large scale event for me is important. For Tom is important and also for a lot of people it is important and we want to share with our followers like I'm fine, I'm, I'm not fine and so on. So for a large scale event we will have big amount of the posts that can that if we uh, collect them we analyze them and we process them we can transform users that are in some way we can let's say passive uh, by passive i mean if i i'm posting people that follow me they can check my post and they can know how am i but does emergency management use this information maybe yes maybe no probably no but like co uh, collecting processing this information emergency management can uh, transform those passive users and passive information into the active and all of us can be involved into the emergency management so with this idea uh, we were observing hurricane uh, michael uh, that happened in October 2018 and it hit Florida coast uh, USA. We can see that at the very beginning it, it started as a tropical storm and it was in the middle of the sea and uh, it was going up, up, up uh, with an increasing uh, um, sever severity. Then uh, when it was very close to the coast it was a type 4 hurricane and when it hit uh, the coast it was like the strongest still type 4, 4 hurricane after what its intensity decreased. So luckily the most part of the land was not hit by the, the highest intensity of the hurricane, just uh, the first uh, part of the coast. Here we can see all the posts uh, that have been uh, downloaded, Twitter posts, in particular 8,169 georeference posts that have had image or video content. But, there is but, <laughs> uh, because like 0.6% uh, of those posts have had uh, the geolocation that was inserted by the user. The rest, like almost uh, all of the posts, didn't have this information. And uh, my colleague, uh, Barbara Pernici, she um, developed this algorithm, CIME, originally for the E2MC project that was adjusted uh, for purpose of our work. Uh, what does this algorithm do? It is searching the, the information about the location inside of the comments of the posts. If we are lucky, we, uh, the, the algorithm finds it and it assigns it to the post. If not, it goes uh, to search the information about the location inside of the reposts or retweets. And we cross the fingers that the, the people that are sharing, uh, using somebody's post are um, putting this additional information about the location. Maybe they recognize, they say, oh, I live nearby, and then they uh, assign the location. And 99.4% uh, of uh, the, the post um, location have been uh, defined with this algorithm. After what, uh, the, we uh, filter all the posts according to the relevance, because some people, it, posts depend on person that is posting. Maybe I prefer to take a pictures of the buildings, so I will uh, post damaged building and so on. The other person, Tom, he likes to speak more about his feelings, so he will take a selfie and he will talk about uh, the hurricane that happened, but uh, I don't have any information that is useful for me in sense I wanna see the, if the damage occur. So uh, by filter, we, we needed to filter posts 
um, in this way that uh, we will delete uh, posts that were not relevant for our purpose. And um, th the framework uh, was uh, presented by Sara Barozzi uh, in the paper Filtering Images Extracted from Social Media in the Response Phase of Emergency Events. And um, doing this analysis, we have uh, deleted uh, repost, the uh, duplic uh, yeah, doubles, uh, also posts that have uh, uh, the image of the face, like selfie, or maybe um, the people from um, news that is uh, informing about the event. Also, uh, the images that have uh, as a content test text. Um, and so on. And finally, we we were uh, we have had uh, 254 Twitter posts that we will use for further analysis. And we can see how uh, they are dispersed over um, the observed area. All the the colored dots. And they are uh, relevant posts that will be used for the further analysis. So the first analysis, uh, we used heat map uh, plugin and uh, kernel de um, or kernel density. Um, as a bandwidth, uh, we were using 100 kilometers uh, since the ratio of the average uh, city in the observed area was 100 kilometer. And as a result, uh, two areas have been selected, uh, Panama City, this one, and area near Douglas. Uh, before uh, doing this analysis, we were expecting to find clusters in the populated areas uh, along the hurricane path. So if the area is not populated, people will not, there are no people, so nobody will post, maybe even if uh, the area is damaged. Uh, and if we take a closer look to the Panama City, in this scale, in this map, in the small scale, we can see, uh, we cannot, just by looking, we cannot see that like the, the highest concentration of the posts is here. But if we take a closer look, we can see that the posts are well spread along uh, the city. So, I said, uh, our, we were expected to find clusters in populated areas. Comparing like uh, two areas that have been uh, detected uh, by this analysis, we can see that Panama City is uh, uh, well, po very populated, and the area near Douglas it has very small, very small population per square kilometer. So something is not good. <laughs> Taking a closer look on the post of this area, we find out that in total there are 29. Okay, they are, they are concentrated, but the thing is like they're one over each other, they, they are overlapping. And going more deep uh, into the analysis, we find out that all of the posts have been posted from uh, different broadcasting companies. So must be that the algorithm was assigning this location um, to, the, uh, to those posts that have been um, posted by the broadcasting companies. So uh, let's, we, we can say that uh, this area, even though it is high, highly concentrated, it is uh, wrong and we will see uh, more forward. Uh, so the second idea is like, okay, in the first analysis we were considering only spatial analysis, like uh, how the post their distribution in the space. And what will happen if we also take into the consider consideration the time when the posts have been posted, in particular the day of posting. So we use the hotspot analysis plugin that have been um, um, developed by Daniel Oxoli that is here uh, with us. And uh, more information about this plugin in, in, in details, it is possible to see, uh, to find out in uh, his uh, published work. 
But uh, performing this analysis, uh, I don't know how familiar you are with this analysis. Uh, most of the people are uh, trying, when they do this analysis, they are looking hotspots. We did a bit, uh, mm, uh, a bit different thing. Uh, we were looking for cold spots because uh, cold uh, spot was uh, showing us the posts that are concentrated one to each other and uh, that, are, uh, that have been published at the early stage of the event. So we have had like uh, almost real time informing about uh, the situation. And uh, this analysis point out this area that is Panama City area and the, the second area that have been Mark with the previous analysis is no, uh, not more present, so we can say that uh, this analysis is more uh, suitable for our um, uh, work. And uh, finally, uh, to conclude, I can say that social media uh, platforms are very powerful source of information. But uh, we have to be very careful how to use this information and how to like filtrate it because it is a very like big source and it is possible to find everything. Um, so be very careful when uh, downloading the data. And as we saw, uh, also the parameters parameters that are inside of the metadata of uh, your data set, uh, the high attention should be paid um, because uh, we, the analysis result depends a lot on the selected parameters and in most of the, the analysis. And uh, here are the future works that uh, I'm focused and I, I will be uh, focused. Thank you so much. Oh, questions. <laughs> um, for your, yeah, for your uh, future work, you notice you I noticed you were going to try to correlate it with actual damage. Um, where are you planning on getting that from? Because um, I know female produces it for the U.S. in this scenario. Um, I don't know if you're going to get that. In, in which, in which, can you explain me a bit more <laughs> uh, your your question? Like, from I, if I understood well, the damage from information from where I will uh, take them? No. Right. Correct. Uh, well, um, I will I will take mm, some. Mm, it depends on the event, uh, and um, in most of the cases, I'm using Copernicus EMS and their uh, map data sets, and uh, I'm using to, to correlate. Okay, uh, for, I just wanted to share, we can maybe talk after. Yeah, 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 sure. But for Michael, for instance, uh, FEMA has a, an open data set for historical damage assessments, structure by structure. Oh, okay. um, I built it, so I can oh, share Oh, okay, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> so definitely we will talk after, thanks. I want to know the basic uh, conceptual framework in your research. And then uh, you talked about uh, 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 georeference tweets. Uh, uh, did you take care of uh, maybe the tweets outside the zone? Uh, you mentioned about 800 and, uh, is it 8,000 thereabouts? So how many of those tweets are within the, the zone and then outside? Uh -huh. Okay, so um, when we were collecting those tweets, the first, like, uh, 8,169 were downloaded uh, based on the hashtag and keywords uh, without knowing if they have, like, inserted ge ge defined geolocation or not. Uh, and then after, it, so it was much more than 8,000, okay? And then, uh, I, as I told, like only 0.6% have had uh, geolocation already inserted, and the rest uh, was uh, found by the, the algorithm that have been developed by my colleague. So, um, 
I don't know if I answer your, your question because uh, in sense we covered all the area. If if you take a look, okay, this one, for example, here, see they're much much uh, far away from the hurricane SWAT, and uh, still we we located them even though maybe they were not uh, so relevant for us but we found their location okay but you didn't take note of uh, maybe the number of tweets outside the location out of the 8000 how many are outside the location and how many well are uh, no those this 8000 are all that you can see in in the map Okay. okay, and uh, like, um, let's say that those that didn't have the loca defined location are much more, maybe even doubled, okay? <laughs> Do you have thoughts about how using tweets with no georeferenced, maybe in the text they, they talk about the place? Is there a way, or do you think about a way to take advantage of that? Um, yes, I know. <laughs> uh, in in sense, uh, uh, if if the the we we didn't do the semantic analysis that much, and we were not focused on the semantic uh, analysis and taking the, the information. But um, as far as since at the end, there are not a lot. There are just 254. And I guarantee, if you trust me, if you, if you trust me, like I did, I, I check one by one. Because at the, at the end, if you go, if you go to check the, the framework for uh, relevance filtering, there is a part like automatic part and then crowd a crowdsourcing part. But uh, for this uh, research, since uh, the, the the amount was very small, uh, we did we were the crowd, let's say, uh, since it was not our um, main point of, of the work and. Um, I, I can tell you that there was no, like, th they were not uh, saying maybe the street, like, very, very precise uh, location. Maybe they would say in the city of, but, like, more precise uh, location was not defined inside of the text. Do you consider that people put the georeference because they know it's, it's important, it's useful, or because they just put it... Every, every I don't time. know. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, I hope like if um, like spreading this idea, it will uh, raise the the awareness that also like um, anybody uh, can contribute. Hi, I'm Ramona Pelic from Luxembourg, and I have a question uh, which is related to the one before. So the precision of the geolocation, do you think, I don't know, it's about five, can it be about five, 20 meters? Because I'm working with flood mapping in bare soil, but also urban areas with Copernicus data, and that's the results we have. And I would like, because we would like to compare this with uh, your results from uh, social media data. Well, well, for this particular case, I, I didn't check uh, that that much in deep, like the the precision. But for another case that was flood in UK, uh, I did it, and I have to say that um, it differs from place to place, uh, and also like type of uh, the the urban area, like if it is a big city or a smaller city. Sure. Yeah, but le let's say that in that case the precision was like um, about uh, two meters. That's right, because we have, like, for example, some results not from this area, but from uh, Hurricane Harvey in uh, 2017 that affected quite a lot Houston in the U.S. So it would be nice to compare this kind of yeah, um, definitely. results. Thank you. Thank you. I had the last question, but time is uh, running out. I will ask uh, separately. So thank you very much. Thank you.